I got my blood drawn for Inside Tracker, but in Germany. So first I will go through kind of the pricing structure and also then how to get into Inside Tracker, how to buy it, and then how I implemented it and had my first blood draw in last December. The first thing you need to understand, I think, is that Inside Tracker, at least previously, had kind of two different things. First, for the international audience, they had a blood upload subscription. So this meant you could use the platform and upload your results. In addition, if you wanted the inside age calculation, you had additionally to pay for it. So I did both things. The first one cost me $119 and the second one cost me, I think, $30 or something like this. Both were on a discount of about 20%. I think I got the link from Puberman or I don't know. And so... In the US, and also I think Canada, additionally, you could also buy the blood draws, I think, with Quest Diagnostics. But outside of the US, I think, and also Canada, you have to find the lab on your own and then you can upload. I think you can upload in between 10 to 20 uh, blood test results, also if you have historic ones to the platform, which allows you to then not have to worry about the inputting and about the unit conversions because, well, it turns out not the whole world uses one English. Second, then also the abbreviations that are used in English. So the words might be different, but also the abbreviations might be different. And also there might be multiple words, sometimes Latin words, sometimes the words in US language, and sometimes the, the words in, in my case, German language that are then used to describe basically the different parameters. So I tried to come up with an Excel sheet and then matching all of these and also getting the prices right. But I eventually would find a better solution, which I will in the end kind of tell you about because this is kind of the end of the story and also planning my next blood draw. Now, I therefore, first of all, bought the subscription, then I uploaded all my blood results. Now, the service does take about two weeks, so sometimes I try it at least on my own, but what is the value of a metric in there if you don't know if it's the right metric or even the right unit? If you upload on your own, you can basically select a unit in Inside Tracker, which is not possible on Heads Up Health, for example, which is a platform that also does something similar where you can upload your blood results, but uh, you cannot change the unit. You can make a custom unit there, but well, I didn't find something like this. I also searched for an app that possibly would allow to do this, to do this at basically uh, low cost compared to Inside Tracker, which was already quite a purchase decision to now pay $10 a month, basically for just using a blood interpretation, a blood results interpretation platform. Now, in addition, I wanted also the inside age calculation. So I previously already heard about this concept of trying to reduce the speed of aging, mostly by Brian Johnson. I also previously read Lifespan by David Sinclair and also a couple of other books on this. Andrew Steele also wrote a, top, a book on this topic. But what I, so I wanted an inside age calculation also. And so the idea was that with at least inside tracker, I could then have first of all blood results, but also an inside age calculation compared to if I would get a DNA methylation test, for example, which would also give me an aging rate, but then I would not have the blood results. And since so many, at least and Huberman and also Peter Thier and also other people in the online space that seem to have some expertise in health or ne not necessarily health but rather health optimization because often these are not MDs but just well PhDs but Peter Thier for example also seems to be an MD. Now back to Inside Tracker. So um, so what, what I was saying was try what I was trying to say with the DNA methylation thing with Inside Tracker, I have the blood results, so the raw data, which I then, with, which fulfills the function of now having my blood results, basically my blood parameters, and I can also have a aging, a aging output, a bio age output, but with the DNA methylation test, I would be missing. So, uh, if I would have kind of the same budget, then the DNA methylation test would cost around 250, and also the Inside Tracker, if all I took basically all the blood the blood parameters that you can upload to Inside Tracker that are recommended, at least in my case, for males, then this would also cost me around 250 I had calculated, but I did not have all the data yet. In terms of the implementation, then, I decided to do this at the end of the year in order to then aim at a yearly blood draw, which I then would pay out of pocket because, well, now you could have a private insurance in Germany that might pay for something like this, I don't specifically know. There is, in Germany, 
uh, private insurance, but also governmental insurance, which covers more of the basic things. So by default, you are insured by the government, but if you are self-employed and also if you are above a certain income threshold, then you can po posit not positively, but potentially switch to a private insurance, but then you can only switch back uh, if there is a um, very special situation in which you then are employed again, for example. And so this is kind of the rare case. You can kind of go only into the one direction, which is from the governmental to the private one. But the private one might have different incentives running compared to the governmental one. So there might be many different uh, variables involved in this decision. So the governmental insurance probably won't cover any of something like uh, any blood results that are covered with inside tracker, unless you have currently an issue, and then maybe some of it might be if your doctor says, okay, this is relevant, then they might do part of this as basically um, as symptom-based and the other part you would have to pay on your own, depending on which markers you want to do. If you, in my case, so I said, okay, I want to at least go already into this. So then I already have a first kind of, I already had, I would have this done at least once. I would already have figured out kind of the, the logistics of this. And so I decided I would uh, try uh, to get the cost down by only taking a couple of parameters which would result in an inside age and I only had these basically. Additionally I made the mistake of also getting another blood parameter. So there are a couple of sets, I think it is five in terms of uh, the inside age calculation and at least at this point in time I don't know, I, they seem to change them up over time as I looked again through the website and then they were different and then also sometimes there was a display error so this was quite confusing. Nonetheless there seem to be a couple of parameters five of six or four to six or four to seven which then would produce kind of an inside age. So you could also have um, maybe inputs like BMI for example from Garmin for Garmin if you had connected Garmin to inside tracker and now if you have one of these sets then there are two questions I asked myself. The first one is what values are I most interested in? And the second one is um, if I can have multiple sets, what is the one that costs the least? And so I try to have a compromise between values that I actually think uh, I'm interested in or that would have kind of a more predictive power about some, some things compared to well other things that I'm not that interested in. So I went for the one that actually had I think I w went for the one that had the second lowest cost, which so the range I think from around 20 euros for the inside age calculation in terms of how much I would pay just for the markers, but I additionally would have to pay 10 euros of a blood draw fee at the, at the doctor's office. And so I went, f so they would range, these, uh, these different parameters would range from I think 20 to uh, I think around 60, depending on uh, which parameters were included and also sometimes the parameters were quite cheap with only two euros fifty or something like this and some some like SBHG or SHBG um, would have you would have to pay 25 or 27 euros for it. I then accidentally had also SHBG um, in there which was uh, part of a different part of a different set of parameters which would then produce the inside age calculation. Now for this reason, the whole thing did cost me actually the SHBG more compared to what I otherwise would have paid. So what I otherwise would have paid is I think 45 or something like this for the different parameters and then additionally uh, 10 euros of blood draw. So it would have cost me 55 or something like this. I had calculated maybe even less than this. In addition, I had something done which in English or the US is called a complete blood panel. Uh, I just am looking this up again, just that I get it right. It's called complete blood count in German. It's called a big blood panel or small blood panel. So basically the big blood panel also includes the small one. So I decided to also have this done as this was only a couple of euros and it get me a couple of additional parameters. Now in the complete blood count is usually included at least in, in the German version of it, which is called Großes Blutbild or Kleines Blutbild. So what we have in there are the, all the different things that are called files or fields. So eosinophil count, eosinophil percentage, then also the same one for the monocytes, monocyte count, monocyte percentage, and then also for for something else which I currently can find. Then we also have MCH, MCHC, MCV. Then what I also had in there were the platelets, which are I think the white blood cells. 
and the neutral file count and the neutral file percentage which are also and also MPV and so a couple of these are ratios from a few things to other things then for the for the inside age calculation I had triglycerides I had the SHBG which uh, would have not been necessary then there are also RBC and RDW which are also in the big in the complete blood count or in the big bit in the big blood panel now in addition I had let's just go through the, through it the lymphocytes the lymphocyte count and percentage are also in there and the hematocrit I think is also in the bit big blood panel or it could also have been part of the inside age calculation then glucose then calcium then well that's already albumin I think what was also in there in the inside age required so in the blood markers required for the inside age calculation we have white blood cells then we have hemoglobin hba1c was also in the inside age calculation and ldl cholesterol so what i think was in the inside age calculation i also i can just uh, pull it up maybe such that i don't actually tell you something which is not right but let's just first pause the video so i cannot find the page any longer with the different sets what it is now so if i just access the inner 2.0 which will also include the blood draw so this would be for the us then there are for males 17 so 13 for males no 17 for males and 13 for females for males there are is glucose calcium ldl triglyceride hba1c albumin then free testosterone ggt s hbg r hrs so high sensitive crp red blood cells hematocrit then mch mchc neutrophils basophils and lymphocytes and for females we have glucose ldl triglyceride hba1c tebc which is total iron binding capacity albumin ggt dheas lymphocytes rdv isanophiles basophiles and monocytes as i think i mentioned already i decided to have uh, measurements like these at the end of the year in terms of the frequency in terms of the frequency and so i decided i would assign a certain budget to this in this case the budget would be just a kind of a test budget so this would be maybe 50 euros maybe 60 euros then i would have the inside age calculation and i would hope that in the next year i would be financially so able that i could afford a whole blood panel which then would cost me maybe 300 euros or something like this then uh i already mentioned this at the doctor's office that i would have done this actually previously i had uh, other other another test again which then i was conflicted should i also now have these additional markers here but i decided it would be better if for the one blood draw it would be just uh, so this was also paid by insurance but the other one then i completely paid myself such that they would be separate and there would not be a conflict of interest between me and the interaction between the physician and so on and so forth this would be the thing i would do on my own and the other thing would be whatever so i would not want that i would need to convince the doctor that they would need to do this on insurance but they would not feel right about doing this because this might disadvantage somebody else who might have so there is only a certain amount of money in healthcare and so it's doctors give out basically money with the with the it seems to be the case that this was the better solution so i then had the scheduled appointment i tried to find a an appointment which was as close to the end of the year as possible in order to have the kind of the timestamp of the new year such that this would still be kind of the old year but it would be the calculation for basically all of the year i also with the inside age calculation could then uh, basically make my own aging rate so by taking the the age that the chronological so by having the biological age and just by dividing it by the chronological you get an av average aging rate so with every bio age you potentially could get also garmin fitness age also maybe the egym biological age calculation you can get kind of an average aging rate maybe also a fitness scale which might put out a metabolic age and so you can get an average aging rate for basically every year of your life which i think is quite a useful concept whereas i think the dna methylation is more based on maybe the last periods and the, so it's more based on your current health so if you do just one test you would also have an average aging rate for your entire life but then if you do multiple ones and it goes up and down what do you do then <laughs> what is the algorithm you then use so just having one a year also seems kind of as a simplification for this because otherwise you would have so many different variables in the course of one one week for example if i test my egym strength 
um, with the machines they have in the gym or also my grip strength which also can be uh, outputted in terms of a uh, in, in terms of a bio age in terms of grip strength bio age one could say i have so many i have so much variation if i happen to do this before and i happen to have not very good sleep and this and there also seem to be yearly fluctuations that slightly maybe depend on the seasons where my my resting heart rate goes up and then it goes down again and my body fat goes up and down again so it seemed to be the case that if I would have a lower frequency than one year, then first of all the cost go up, but then if the cost goes up, uh, do I then also have the full blood panel? Probably not. So I figured if I have one, then probably the, using the units of time or the time heuristics that are all also the most common seems to make sense as it is kind of just a heuristic and then just going up and down so basically i can do things continuous daily weekly and also the yearly because the monthly thing is not very schedulable because if i have a given week and within the week i have a certain amount of fluctuations then i can by setting the day because my training plan is fixed in a given week and then also my diet fluctuates up and down and also depends on the and also results in a different macronutrient ratio because on some days I eat more carbs and, uh, and so on and so forth. So what I'm trying to say is that I think the yearly makes the most sense as of now. So I then had this, this scheduled at the 20th of December, then I got all of these blood draws, then I, I already had asked if they just could mail the results, but of course they couldn't. Now in addition, uh, in addition, the lab side so the lab is called level part in this case and they would be able to send the results digitally in theory at least but i asked them about this and asked also my doctor about this and my doctor said okay ask them about the, the code so i already tried this out before and in an afternoon or an evening i spent like two or three hours trying to then get uh, trying to input all the different codes i had then eventually from the results and, but it didn't work, so I did not get digital access. The lab already has an app. I also searched for a couple of other private labs, which also sometimes seem to have labs, but there is no overarching solution uh, that would apply for all of Germany, for example, in which you then... So the Labopart brand is already, I think, kind of including multiple labs in multiple different cities. So uh, what additional what an additional complication was is that, well, first of all, I did not get the the results mailed even though I specifically asked about this and that they just didn't mail them and then I had to call them again and the scheduling already was quite difficult because well at a physician that takes governmental insurance patients it often is quite busy and so also because I was not necessarily there for a specific reason but rather to just have this I also felt kind of guilty about this potentially taking time away from others and so um, I then had to make an additional appointment to get the first results. So they told me basically that the results would be there the next day. But then as I was there the next day and I had an appointment to potentially discuss something that came up, even though this was not really necessary, but I asked the doctor and she said, okay, would be useful if we take a look. And so I came in the next day to get all of the results, but some of the results weren't there yet because some seemed to have taken longer. And so they didn't know this specifically and they told me to come in the next day, but then these weren't here. And they, uh, I asked again whether they could mail them. And uh, well, they, say, <laughs> they said yes, <laughs> and then they didn't mail them. And then after a couple of months, I then had to call again. And then they said, okay, no, we cannot mail them. And they had to first ask the doctor because, uh, well, and then the doctor said, no, you have to come in again. So I basically was three times in there. Oh no, two times but if three times if you also count the blood draw and uh, just for this one blood draw now I then eventually got the results and also the ones that were then uh, only available after a couple of weeks after which I then had to go there again basically during the workday because well usually a doctor's office is only open during the workday and well so I eventually got the results I did not get any any QR code because well the doctor told me to go to the lab and ask for the QR code the QR the lab told me to go to the doctor for the QR code but I did not want an additional phone call with the doctor's office or to go in there again because it also took quite a little bit of time to get there then also you have to wait then also you have to get back so the whole thing often takes uh, in between an hour to maybe three hours which then uh, well is a time investment I then have to also uh, justify for myself is this really worth all of this and also there are some it seemed that I constantly ran against hurdles 
even though of course other people have bigger problems than trying to get a private blood draw done. So I eventually then got all the, all the results. I actually then submitted them in Inside Tracker and so I got the results in paper form. I then scanned them with my phone. I then uploaded them in Inside Tracker. Uh, but I also wanted the interpretation kind of immediate, immediately already. And since I had a little bit of now uh, uh, an Excel sheet in which I had the different uh, names of the English and then the German and then the unit conversions, because there are often are like three different units for the same thing, and then the same thing has different names. Because of the different abbreviations, I, I inputted at least a few values already, and then I nonetheless submitted these and used my kind of credits for, for the submission of results in order for them to then take a look again and potentially correct what I had then initially already input. And so eventually then I got the results, which then is basically, so Inside Tracker is basically the following. You upload your results and then you get an interpretation. Whereas in the doctor's office, you get the interpretation based on the average population, I think mostly. And they also, the, the ranges might differ because some, some, some offices use, use different ranges. So um, at least that's what I heard, but I couldn't make much of these of it's like above, it's in the middle range, yeah, that's nice. But what should I, for example, what could I do about this and also what is relevant to this? And so now in Inside Tracker, I additionally have the optimal ranges, which means that they are already kind of targeted towards me. So in my specific age group, for example, or also now additionally with the Garmin connection, they also have my weight, which is updated whenever I step on the, as of now, the Garmin index S2, which I specifically got because otherwise um, I would not be able to have body composition in Garmin because Garmin accepts it only from the native devices, which, uh, well, is a policy decision, I guess. Now, and so I have my VO2 max estimate now imported from Garmin, also my resting heart rate imported from Garmin, also my sleep data imported from Garmin to Inside Tracker, which they can additionally use to potentially alter the recommendations if there would be something that would influence this. Now, Inside Tracker, first of all, has the blood panel. Then second of all has their their longevity categories, and then third of all has also recommendations. So as I am now kind of going through these, so the blood results upload are kind of pretty straightforward. You also have the app, which is also quite useful. So as I then switched my doctor's office because I switched to one that is nearer because. I had visited the doctor at this point a couple of times and it was often quite a time investment and I just wanted to f find a, a little bit of a better solution for this. I then was able to, with, in a German doctor's office, pull up basically my phone and instead of having to, sometimes I took actually my notebook into the doctor's office and of course you feel weird about this because, well, who are you to just now go in there and, and outside there are 10 people waiting and you pull up your, your notebook with, okay, I have this inside tracker Excel list and it's it, then there might be an error in there because, well, you might have had an error and then you don't have an internet connection unless you connect to your phone and then it's like, uh, and then your keyboard on your notebook doesn't work. A lot of things that could go wrong. But if I just have my phone, then, well, it's just my phone, and then I have to... But in the new doctor's office, I now had basically all of my results in the Inside Tracker app. And so I could I could use my own data in order to explain uh, my symptoms, for example. So I explained a couple of things I had in the... My, I kind of had to uh, present myself again because I switched to the doctor's office and so I was able to just, okay, these are my blood results. All of my blood results I ever had apart from the ones that are outside of Inside Tracker, because Inside Tracker only has kind of the, the general health ones, whereas there are also on some blood results I had also for specific symptoms in the past, there were like things. So then going into Inside Tracker, I now had a couple of different things. The first one are the blood results. The second one are the recommendations. The third one is then the inner age calculation. And then you could also potentially upload your DNA results if you do a DNA test either with Inside Tracker or with a party that cooperates with Inside Tracker. I think there are two, which are my heritage and also Ancestry or a company like this, maybe also something else. Now, in terms of my inner age, I got a 37.4 at a chronological age back then of 27 so this me meant that i was 10 years older which is basically 25 percent older which is not that great and um, you also get a breakdown so you basically have all of the different markers that positively or negative negatively impact your your inner age calculation in this case the inner age is the 2.0 this might change in the future as they might come up with a new algorithm or also include maybe different parameters maybe synchronizing blood pressure from 
from Garmin, even though in my experience the, the Garmin Index BPM, that is the only device that synchronizes blood pressure to the Garmin natively, seems to have quite a high variability in terms of the blood pressure today in the morning I had for example 170 and well there was not that much different in this morning even though yeah well uh, that might be part uh, of another of, an, of another discussion so for example my lymphocyte percentage seems to be up and adds 3.9 years to my inside age calculation whereas mm, the lowest so the thing that takes away the most years is glucose, which in my case was 74 milligrams per deciliter, which takes away 1.7 years. There was also the question if I should train before and so on. So my glucose level probably are impacted to a certain extent if I have trained before or not, or if I uh, on a bike kind of biked to the office and then maybe after 10 minutes already had the blood draw. So these were questions I had, but they said this wouldn't matter that much, but I assume it still might have mattered. And also, to a certain extent, I asked myself the question, or I asked myself the question, to which extent the sprint workout, so I did a HIT workout in this before, basically this blood draw, negatively impacted. So my lymphocytes, for example, I think, I'm not sure about the lymphocytes, but what I've heard is that the white blood cells are up if there is inflammation going on, so maybe there's some inflammation going on after training. So also then one has to maybe include this in the kind of year-long planning of doing something like this. On which day, and also if then the workout plan changes, do you want this to be the, the most comparable? Now, uh, the recommendation part of the nutrition, so there are, so basically we have the inner age, we have also the results, which then also show up on your phone, and then you also have recommendations. The recommendations are basically divided in a couple of different things, but the website as well as the app are kind of not the same. So in the app you have different things compared to the app. So on the website, which I currently have open here, I can only now see my personal foods, for example. I can also set certain things like wh which kind of diet I want to have. In Inside Tracker is, and this is also the only service that offers something like this to my knowledge, I can input which supplements I take. So I input creatine, for example. I input turmeric, which I also take, omega-3, and there are also ranges for these supplements. So for example, I got the recommendation that I should increase my turmeric, but it was only like five or 10 milligrams away from what I actually take. So um, it didn't matter that much. I was just a couple of milligrams below the threshold, and so it gave me, gave me the recommendation. Now, um, as Brian Johnson kind of familiarized myself with this with this idea of algorithmic nutrition and kind of this this idea that maybe I will never be able to plan out for all the different variables and therefore then to find a, pa a path of optimization towards all of these. I uh, tinkered or started to tinker around or to f I started to tinker with the idea of how could I possibly uh, to a certain extent autom automate part of my nutrition already. And so the idea was born that maybe I could have a food shake that was now to a certain extent maybe made by me, but to a certain extent maybe also made by an algorithm. And I kind of uh, got back to Inside Tracker. And so the idea was now, what if I took the Inside Tracker food recommendations and so there are different recommendations, first of all. The first ones are, so there are lifestyle recommendations, then diet recommendations, and also other ones. But I have to think, uh, I, I do pull up my phone now. So as I open Inside Tracker as of now, and you don't see anything because I have to adjust the auto exposure. I think I will just start with a fresh new plan. Create an action plan. And then I can select of all, basically um, I can select the goal. What am I trying to do? Inner age, overall health, injury, prevention, recovery, stress. There is also one that optimizes for strength and power. Then also lose fat, metabolism, endurance, sleep, immunity, heart health, and gut health. Now, I was kind of torn between inner age as well as strength and power, because I figured uh, optimizing for longevity, I, to a certain extent, didn't trust necessarily Inside Tracker that they would actually do the right thing. Uh, maybe was a slight suspicion on my side. So I opted for strength and power as a way to now in my 20s optimize basically strength and power to overall optimize longevity. But I then eventually decided to just take take the most simple or the simplest approach, which was to just uh, get the inner age down basically, which is also kind of the approach Brian Johnson takes and he seems to somewhat be reasonable 
reasonably successful with this approach. So I decided to again take the inner H, in, even though previously I had uh, the strength and power calculation, not the calculation but the goal. So with the strength and power I got recommendations such as take ashwagandha, take uh, take creatine for example, whereas with the inner H I didn't get these recommendations so much, they seem to be more like uh, <laughs> longevity trendy, uh, what one would think would optimize for longevity. So eat more flaxseed and things like these compared to um, do this more that actually improves your function as of now. But it seems to be the case that the, the, the recommendations I got with strength and power are more in, more in line with my thinking as of current. So I was quite conflicted and I am again conflicted as of now. So now what it does is it analyzes the data, it, it is evaluating the scientific research and is generating my recommendations. So my goal is inner age and now it has a couple of action items and also it has an action plan for me. But it just loaded kind of the old one again because it was identical. So as I didn't have any new insights in terms of the blood results and I also chose the same goal, it seems to be the same kind of recommendation. So you have you have different recommendations that are now the recommendations part of the inside tracker results. Now in, initially I did not think that these would actually um, that I would actually use these recommendations at all. I mostly was interested in the blood interpretation and also having basically my blood data on my on my app. Maybe in the future you can connect it to Garmin. I mean, there is already a connection to Garmin, but Garmin's fitness age, for example, does not take into account any data from inside tracker to my knowledge. Now. We have, first of all, the exercise recommendations, which in, in this case are mix up my aerobic routine. This is automatically tracked whenever you have an activity that meets this threshold. Uh, I think it's 30 minutes of uh, cardiovascular, cardiovascularly recognized activity. Then you also have the nutritional recommendations. Then you also have the supplement recommendations, but I did choose to not have any supplement recommendations in there, which is now updated. So I previously had this changed already on the website, but it did not update the plan. It seems to update only once you. it asks you again to have a new plan, which in this case seems to be 90 days. Now, why did I um, why did I not uh, want the supplement recommendations in there any longer? Because, well, it seems to, if I only have this once a year, then I, I think I would need a, a shorter cycle uh, to, for this, for these, for this to make this, for this to make this work. I already have I already have been buying in the last couple of months and years, been buying supplements in my case, omega freeze up to two grams of EPA recommended in this in this dose by Huberman. Then I also am taking a multivitamin with minerals. Then I'm also taking turmeric, in this case 490 micro, not micro but milligrams in a capsule form, and as of the extract I think, but I cannot remember as of now what it exactly is. And then I'm also taking something else, which is, which is creatine. I have been tinkering around with different ranges from 1 to 25 gram, but this is not so much relevant to Inside Tracker, as only as that I now have input this already in Inside Tracker. So for now, I have decided that I run my own supplement recommendations basically, because if I would additionally take the supplement recommendations from Inside Tracker, then I would first of all have to find a kind of a rule or an algorithm on my side that I would. So I could not get all, so there are now in total 21 recommended actions, but there would be more if I did not have the, if not, if I didn't opt out of, are you willing to take supplements on the website or also on the app? So if there are that many recommendations, the question is how many do I implement? So to answer this question or to give you kind of a, a heuristic, maybe, how you should answer this question, there is an impact score. So the score grows from, I don't know, some value up to 10. And so the, the values with the highest impact score are then the ones you should probably focus the most on compared to the ones that go. So as you go down, the impact score also goes down as they rank in higher impact score on top, basically. Now, taking the supplements out of the equation also means I do no longer search for the supplements on Amazon. It seems to be kind of a side tangent optimization. Of course, it would be maybe useful if I also take these supplements into account, but if I then don't test, um, and I only test once a year, and this, well, then <laughs> this this test reflects only a certain state. And in last December, I might have had high liver values, for example. And if I then for the whole year take these supplements without testing again, then the problem might be that I don't need these supplements any longer. So, um, as I also base now my nutritional, nutritional, nutrition 
on part on inside tracker, it seems to be again uh, to be useful to maybe have a higher frequency. But the question is then, do I do all of the blood markers or only some of them? But then again, it seems more useful to have once a year, basically uh, a determining a determining blood draw that then also to, also to a certain extent determines my nutrition. Now. Uh, there are also lifestyle recommendations such as sleep seven to nine hours a night, which is also then tracked with Garmin. So it actually, if you then go on the habit, it for example says that last night I actually did this, and so this is the automated tracking thing. It also now uh, says how what blood parameters are specifically impacted by this, and this is just so useful. For example, when taking ashwagandha, it said it possibly would increase my VO2 max, but I did not find this specifically again. Now, there are also these categories now, and these categories are only if you actually get all of the 44, or at least of the ones that are relevant for this category of the blood parameters. I only have one category ranked, which is endurance. So now it opens up the web page actually, because this seems to be not built into the app. So as the web page opens up, this usually takes quite a while. And then you also get a score. And depending on how high you are on the score, the better you probably are in terms of endurance. So this is, for example, my endurance calculation. And then there are all these different markers that are relevant to endurance and then it also shows you basically the weights of all of these markers and how they impact your endurance and so having something like this seems to be just so useful even though inside tracker might not be the best thing on the market it for sure is kind of the so what i'm trying to say is they could already be 10 times better at this they could already integrate so much more maybe blood pressure from garmin maybe maybe also body composition for example and then also include this in, in their endurance score or something like this. They already have DNA testing. They already have, they already take view to max the estimate from Garmin and they're also resting heart rate into account in basically their calculation or, or at least in some of them. But what I would want is something that takes into account all of the data I have, maybe also pulling in the the data from inside tracker even though it seems to be not that reasonable in terms of a time investment to track all of my food. But just there are so many data streams one could tap into and possibly then uh, optimize with. Now also the question is to which extent these then actually would alter the recommendations but if they are in there then you would just kind of know that they are in there and if they don't have an impact then they don't have an impact. Now um, this is actually um, then what the, the standard view in terms of the blood interpretation looks like so you can just go through these. There is also a different view available at least on the website and here it also is a view available where it only shows you the, the least value. Then you also have the activity, which in this case is from Garmin, so deep sleep, and also you get a, a yearly readout of the deep sleep, then there is also DNA, and then you also have your NIH in the app itself. Now the categories are also there, and then there is also the home where you have basically your routines, not routines, but the habit habits you can track within inside tracker but I decided to not have them in there but because they often seem to be not very specific. Then you also have your action plan in which there you find the recommendations. So what I tried to do with this prototype project of trying to determine parts of my nutrition by an algorithm or and now kind of just a, a yearly algorithm in terms of the blood draw and then I get the inside age as well as these recommendations which update that I would So new sentence. The idea was I would take all of the nutritional recommendations and combine it with the food shake idea. And so I would get basically all of the food recommendations I could get in a powdered form. Why? Because then I can make a food shake and have all of the different ingredients in my kitchen cabinet. And this would allow me to have part of my nutrition kind of algorithmically determined. So I now have a morning drink which is resulting out of the recommendations by Inside Tracker. So if I then and this was also, there was also this idea that I would have my supplements on my own and the nutritional recommendations here and to also have these separated because sometimes they overlap. Sometimes you can get a supplement in a powdered form such as creatine, which then also would be part of your nutrition, but it's actually a supplement. So I wanted a clear line. Uh, nutrition, nutritional recommendations by Inside Tracker, but I would not have supplement recommendations by Inside Tracker because, well, I only have a certain amount of budget I can, um, I can not align, but there is a word which I am missing right now, so I can use uh, basically. So um, in terms of implementing these, now uh, eat probiotic food, for example, I 
there are different things in there which are in this and I decided to just implement this as a rule in my habit tracker which if I eat three forks of sauerkraut then this is fulfilled and then I check it in my habit tracker but sauerkraut is not something that is available in powdered form but ground flaxseed is but I don't want to have four tablespoons of flaxseed as recommended in there so I got a flaxseed powder and on the package it said uh, it basically had a lower recommendation and I just took the lower recommendation because the flaxseed also has fat in it and so I now have I think a scoop of flaxseed which might be half a teaspoon or something like this or one teaspoon in my morning drink. In addition it gives me other recommendations such as diversify your protein sources with plants, incorporate more olive oil and actually there are now uh, there are now recommendations that are missing which now I still have in my morning shake which now means uh, that that whole idea of algorithmic nutrition in my eyes would be that I just copy paste whatever is in there. So if this is no longer in there, I should also take it then out of my morning shake, which I no, don't know if I should do right now. So I would also have the flaxseed recommendation, but the flaxseed recommendation, so the flaxseed recommendation is still in there. And I also took one supplement recommendation, kind of crossing the line, and also this has been questionable in my eyes, but I wanted a lever which would have basically a fiber lever. I do realize that also the vegan plant, plant-based plant protein powder, which I am taking, also has flaxseed in there, so there is also fiber in there. The whey protein shake I am using, uh, or the whey protein I'm using, has, for example, no fiber in there. So I'm trying to have kind of different components to the meal shakes I make in order, in order to also save time and to um, basically follow this concept of the meal shake, at least as the first shake of the day and maybe the second. So. This has been then my first implementation of this. So it was a little bit difficult here and there, but, and I also invested a little bit of time into this. And also now retrospectively, um, I actually looked a little bit more into Inside Tracker. And initially I only uh, just kind of was kind of out of an option. I just wanted not my own Excel sp I wanted to not have to make my own Excel spreadsheet with the different ranges and also translating all of these different things and and not knowing whether this impacted this, but having just something which would also be a, a kind of a platform which I can also which which I could also then pull up at my next doctor's visit and just say, okay, and this is what I then did once I switched my doctor's office. I just um, I just said, okay, and by the way, these are all the different, so these are my liver markers, and by the way, these are all the different blood results I ever had, which I actually could input, so that might not be a few fancy ones, but just having the data on there, and also maybe also with Garmin, for example, knowing my resting heart rate, even though my nobody seemed to be interested in my resting heart rate at this point in time. There are different private labs. I also, through Brian Johnson, uh, went into a Discord, uh, at least for a couple of months ago. And there is also there are also part different communities, one could say, where they offer basically already kind of guides into how you could get your blood drawn in France or in Europe or in other parts of Europe or in Germany, for example, in which private labs you could use. Now, I found also a different, a few different apps from different private labs all over Germany, which would maybe also allow you to have then your actual data on your phone. I mean, how useful would this be if you don't have to pull up an Excel, which then loads for 40 seconds and then messes up because then it creates duplicate copies, just the usual uh, in terms of using Excel, for example, on your phone. But um, unfortunately, I was not able with LaboPart to get the results digitally, even though this seems to be technically possible, but the uh, communication between us three entities was not very efficient in that way and did not result in me having the digital. So if I could already have, basically, if I would have gotten the, the level part results uh, already in a digital form, then I would maybe not have gone into Inside Tracker at all because this is kind of all I wanted. I just wanted a platform in which my results are, which I might also be able to upload past results, but then I would just have it consolidated in one app and then take a look at it, maybe online, but also uh, kind of uh, offline or on the web. So not online and offline, but on the web and on my phone. Um, in terms of in terms of the implementation of this, there are basically two ways. You can either go to a private lab or you can go to a doctor's office and then basically collaborate with the lab, that use the lab that the doctor's office collaborates with. 
but you also might have to talk your doctor kind of into and also your doctor then has the responsibility to say okay this might be expensive you might not need this because well um, this to a certain extent is quite expensive and so well this was the experience in Germany and so what I'm planning is to do a full lab of all the different venues which then would cost me and I already kind of simplified now this to a certain extent I just sent them the inside tracker link and they just gave me basically a price list I would not have imagined that it was this easy but it was not that much effort now on my side because I procrastinated on getting all of these different prices and writing an email back and also they've written what I'm trying to say here is I got a list back and it says 275 euros for basically the whole blood panel which also in terms of comparison in the US if you buy a whole plan with inset tracker it seems to go into the ranges of 700 800 900 dollars or something like this but they also might might include sometimes for a year or something like this so I'm not entirely sure what this what the price comparison would be but if we now take all the different costs for basically the next year now I still have the blood, blood upload subscription running till I think next November but I will still again need to buy it so once I need to renew I might be able to get it again at either the now price of 159 or maybe again the reduced price of 119 this would result in $10 a month and then additionally I would have the 275 euros so basically I would have if I just take dollars and euros one to one I would have 275 I think the the blood draw fee is then of the 10 euros which I had to pay at the, at the doctor's office would then be not there so I would have to have the 375 300 yeah well maybe around 400 and this would be basically the cost now also including the inside age calculation